Okay, um, just going to do a little bit of cleanup code on assignment number four, uh, where we're taking a look at um, basically how to use um, a new class to handle certain tasks. In this case, we had a calculated class that uh, calculated the maximum, minimum, and sum uh, of a set of or of an array or uh, set of variables uh, stored in an array. Um, and basically, the way our program worked uh, is fairly simple. I could enter numbers into these three uh, text boxes. I could hit get min. It's going to give me the minimum of those three. Get max, uh, which is going to get me the max. And then get sum, which is going to get me the sum of those three numbers. Um, so fairly straightforward uh, program. One thing that I would like to do though with it is just kind of clean it up and just realize how we don't have to have so much code uh, that's repetitive in this application. So um, taking a look at that, first of all, our calculator class is set up well. Uh, it has three different member functions that are taking in integers uh, and we're using those in just our kind of main class. Now if I take a look at this main class though, we have this button click and it's got a whole bunch of error checking here, uh, try catch statements, uh, just to make sure that if we don't get an integer value, uh, it's able to kind of handle um, that exception if that text box has something beside an integer in it. Uh, but we have that, and we don't necessarily need uh, that error checking to happen. Um, three times within three different, if I scroll down here, three different events. It happens within the button uh, max click, button sum click, button min click. Uh, we need it to happen, but it's it's just repetitive code. So we're going to move that to uh, just a function instead. So I'm going to just cut this chunk of code out here. Uh, I'm going to cut that out, and I'm going to just move that up to the top here, and I'm just going to uh, make a function that that handles that and so I'll just do that right underneath here uh, maybe comment that and call it public functions and I will go public void and I'll just call it get numbers and then I can just plop that code in there and have that in place um, notice that I'm getting an error here on my array. That's another piece of code that I'll fix in a second. Uh, but then from here, what I can do is also move, since that array that's that's getting box numbers from there um, is used three times as well. I only need it in one place. Let's move it up to the top of this class. So I'm going to cut that out. I'm going to move it up here um, so that everyone can access it. And so I only have to have it once and then my errors should start to disappear here. So I have this get numbers, which is just basically its job is to successfully get numbers from our text boxes and then gives us a message box and sets it to zero if uh, something goes wrong and they, there's a letter in there or it's blank or whatever. Uh, it's going to handle that. Um, so I have that error checking in there, but I want that to happen within one function, getting these numbers. So I have that here. So now if I scroll down, um, I can actually delete that repetitive code here and replace that with in that max just with that get numbers function. And so now rather than have it three times, I can just have it once in a function and then put that at the top of um, each of these kind of button clicks. And so I would have, and I should get rid of this line of code because I have that at the top now. Uh oh. Uh, I'm going to put in here get numbers. Just to kind of see now I only have one place where that's doing that and makes my code a lot more readable. Now inside each of these button clicks, I only have three real lines of code, uh, and I'm actually going to drop that down to two. So if I take a look at these three events here, I can still see that I still have this line of code that's repeated three times, uh, where I'm 
creating an instance of my calculator and calling it calculate class. So since it, that's super repetitive, there's no reason for me to have that line of code uh, in three different places. Let's just cut that out. And once again, let's move that up to the top here so that everyone can see that. And so maybe I'd make a section here and comment it. I have public functions. Well, how will I have a section at the top here called public variables? And then those will be able to be seen uh, within each of those events at the bottom as well. Okay, so I have a kind of a public variable section here where I'm declaring my array uh, that's going to be used throughout this class. I also have um, creating an instance of my calculator class here um, that I'm going to use throughout this kind of main class. And then you can see I have my uh, get numbers function that has all the error checking I need to get the numbers from my text boxes. And then once I get down to the bottom here, what that means is that my button click is so much more readable now. I can understand what is going on there because in each of those, I really only need two lines of code. I have called the get numbers function and then I call the member function of the calculator class that I want to use. And so in this case, I have calculator class max. And so it's going to take in those box numbers and, and calculate the max and find the max. Inside my button sum, I have calculator class um, I'm ac accessing the member function sum. And then label min text uh, is going to access calculator class dot min, that member function. So now my code is a lot shorter and a lot more readable. And so uh, even though the working example um, for lesson number four was there, uh, this is a nice cleaner code. And that often happens, you write your code first and then you realize you have repetitive tasks and then you just clean up your code at the end. And so let's just confirm that uh, this is still working as it did before. Enter any random numbers in here. And let's see what we get. Get min, get max, get sum. And our application works just fine. Uh, thanks for watching.